Hello, and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video course. In this video, we'll look at reducing how much RAM is being used up on our Raspberry Pi when we boot the Pi. At the moment, we have some waste overhead, if you've been following this course, how I've been instructing it. And we can get rid of some of that waste overhead in just a couple of easy steps. The first one is the desktop, or X window, is still running on our Raspberry Pi. Even though since video 2, we've been using an SSH connection from our local computer to connect to the Raspberry Pi, when we reboot the Pi, it still boots up the X window, which still uses about 50 megabytes of available RAM. Now, this may not sound like a lot of RAM, but if you're using a Raspberry Pi 3 like I am, which only has about 930 megabytes of RAM to play with, 50 megabytes is a significant portion of that space. So getting rid of that at this stage is very important, particularly as running a web server and an email server combined on a Raspberry Pi does stretch what a Raspberry Pi 3 can do. If you're running a Raspberry Pi 4, you won't be quite as concerned about 50 megabytes, but I still recommend following this because it's useful to have as much RAM available as possible. The second thing is the Bluetooth service. We disabled Bluetooth in the last video to save ourselves some energy However, Bluetooth service is still running in the background, and that is also using some RAM, so this can also be disabled. There's no point in it running because we've disabled Bluetooth, so we may as well get rid of it. So in this video, we're going to tackle these two main things and try to save ourselves between 50 and 60 megabytes of RAM, which is about 6 to 7% of the available RAM on a Raspberry Pi 3, so it's certainly worth doing. So let's go over to the desktop and I'll show you how we can do it. Okay, so here we are on my desktop in my trusty PowerShell in Windows. I'm going to use my alias pi to log in. And the first thing I'm going to do to show how much difference we're going to make is I'm going to use the htop utility, htop, as follows, and press enter. And this will show us how much RAM is being used by our system at the moment. And you can see that currently we're using up 125 megabytes of the available 926. Now, if you think about it, all we've done, if you follow this course, is install a fresh version of Debian on a Raspberry Pi. We've just set up public-private key authentication. We've installed fail to ban. We've disabled password authentication. And we've shut down a couple of um, services like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So why are we using up so much RAM, 125 megabytes? Well, the Pi itself does require services to be running in order to deliver the basic functionality that we've got running. But actually, we can reduce that 125 by a factor of a half. And this is how we're going to do it. Firstly, I recommend you press F6 on your keyboard in HTOP. This allows us to search, or sorry, this allows us to sort the list by a particular column. So if I press down on the keyboard to percent mem, I will be able to sort my list by memory. The top elements in this list are all X window related. You can see by X panel, X window, these are all X window related, all the way down until we get to fail to ban. Fail to ban actually should be at 1.7% usage, probably the most memory expensive item we've got on our Pi in theory, because it's the only thing we've actually installed ourselves that will be using memory, and yet we've got all of this above it. So let's get on with trying to reduce that 125 down to something more like hopefully 60. So to stop the X window being created at boot, we need to tell the Raspberry Pi not to boot into an X window when it restarts. Because though we connect via SSH, the Raspberry Pi is still booting and it still expects that you're going to plug a monitor in and a keyboard and mouse at some point and use it. We want the Raspberry Pi now to behave as a headless server. So let's get rid of the desktop. You do this by typing in sudo R-A-S-P-I Raspi hyphen config. This will open up a user interface for us to make changes to the Raspberry, Raspberry Pi excuse me, configuration. And what we're after on this menu is number three, boot options. So go down twice on the keyboard to boot options and press enter. In this option, this menu, we're interested in two things. Firstly, I'll do B3, which is splash screen. Now I'm not actually sure whether this will make any difference to your memory, but we certainly don't need a splash screen being provided because we're not even going to be looking at a desktop. So if you press enter on B3, and where it says would you like to show the splash screen at boot, make sure it says no. 
Excellent. We'll go back now into the boot options. Now we're back here, I'm going to select B1 Desktop CLI. This is where we get to tell it not to boot into the desktop, but to instead boot into the CLI. So press Enter on B1. And you can see you've got a number of options here. I believe by default it's B4, which is that it logs into the desktop automatically and will have you logged in as Pi. However, what we really want is console, so that it doesn't even try to load a desktop environment. I also prefer that it's not logged in automatically, so I'm going to click on that. There we go, done. It'll take you back to the menu, so you need to press right on the keyboard to go down to the bottom quickly, right again to go to finish, and press enter, and it'll ask you if you wish to reboot. I'm going to say no, and the reason I'm saying no is because we haven't quite finished yet. What we need to do now that we've disabled X window is to remember that we're also going to disable the Bluetooth service. Now it doesn't make as much difference, but it just annoys me that it's running and it has no purpose running. So to disable that, we need to disable a service and disabling a service is done as follows. sudo system ctl. Actually, I will just make this a little bit larger, to make it easier to see. So sudo system ctl disable space and then we've got a few services we need to shut down. The first one is Bluetooth dot service. Press enter. Okay, now press up on your keyboard to get that command back and we're going to disable another service. So I'm going to go back, 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 back up to the word blue. And then I'm now going to type in ALSA. -A. So that's blue ALSA -A dot service and press enter. Okay, and the last one. Now this word isn't really a word, so you'll have to type it out letter by letter. It's H C I U A R T. H C I U A R T dot service. Enter. There we go. And that's all we need to do. So now we need to shut down our Raspberry Pi and restart it. So type in sudo shutdown minus r now. And when I do this, the Raspberry Pi will restart. I'll give it 30 seconds, then I'll come back to this video. And then we'll have a look at HTOP and see what we've saved. Okay, so I've given it about 30 seconds for my Pi to come back up. I actually don't think it needs that long, but I always give it 30 seconds just to be sure. So I'm going to log back in using my alias, Pi. And now I'm going to do HTOP again and see what it looks like. Remembering that it was at 125 megabytes. In fact, at one point I saw it go up to 128. Now we're down to 65, which you can see up here. So that's much better. So like we did before, I'm going to now press F6 on my keyboard and order it by memory. And there we go. We can see, aside from some Python scripts running for upgrades, um, what we've got here largely at the top is the fail to ban, which is what we want. So we've streamlined our server quite nicely now to just be using 66 megabytes. And I think this is a good place to finish setting up the Pi. I think we're in a good place now. We have set up public private key authentication. We've disabled password authentication. We've allowed ourselves to access the Pi through SSH. We've installed fail to ban to harden our connection. And we poked a hole in the firewall so that we could connect from outside of our network. We updated uh, our config file for our alias to allow ourselves to connect externally should we wish to. And finally, we've reduced some services. Some, like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, we reduced to re remove um, waste power usage, which is good. It'll save us a little money in the long run. Um, it's also better for the environment. Um, and we also disabled uh, the X window just now and the Bluetooth service, which has saved us a significant amount of RAM. So we're now in a good place. We've got to a good place and we can move on to actually getting on with looking at developing our web server and our email server. So I hope you found that useful and I will see you in... Oh, before I say that actually, I very much appreciate if you could like and subscribe my video. Um, it helps me to justify recording them. And if you found it useful, all you've got to do is click the thumbs up. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.